Welcome back into our class of BI 210, How to Study the Bible. This is our fifth module, and we're reading through in this module, we're reading through first the first epistle of John from chapter 1 to the end of chapter 5. And we're reading it straight through because it is a long letter without getting involved in the verses or the chapters. And what you're going to discover is that your comprehension is improving and it's improving and it's improving more and more as you read the Word of God, the same word for these next 30 days out loud. So let's go back on day 11. Let's go back to 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. What was from the beginning and what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the Word of Life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. This is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and what? He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He himself is the propitiation for our sins and not, on our, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. By this we know what? By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments the one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him and no one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you which is true in him and, 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 and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Now the one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. The one who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now I'm writing to you, little children. Why? Because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. I'm writing to you, fathers. Why? Because you know him who has been from the beginning. And I am writing to you, young men. Why? Because you have overtaken the evil one. You have overcome him. And I, and I have written to you, children. Why? Because you know the father. Now I have written to you, fathers. Why? Because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, why? Because you are strong. <clears throat> and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. <clears throat> Do not love the world nor the things in the world. Now, if anyone loves the world and the love, the love of the Father, it's, in, it's not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, it's not from the Father, but it is from the world. 
Now the world is passing away and also its lust, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. <clears throat> Children, it is the last hour, and just as, just as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming, even now. Many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. <clears throat> now they went out from us, but they really were not of us. If or have they been of us, if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out, so that it would be known that they are all not of us. But you have an anointing, an anointing from the Holy One, and you all know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know the truth, because you know it, and because no lie is in the truth. Who is the lie? Who? but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father, and the one who confesses the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son, in the Father, and this is the promise for which he himself made to us eternal life. Now these things I have written to you <clears throat> concerning those who are trying to deceive you. As for you, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and it is true, and it is not a lie, and just as it taught you, you abide in him. Now, little children, abide in him, so that he, when he appears, we may have confidence, and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also practices or that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. See how great a love, how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God and such and as such we are for this reason the world. The world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared yet as we will be. We know, we know that when he appears, we will be like him. Why? Because we will see him just as he is, and everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Now, everyone who practices sin also what? Practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Now you know that he appeared in the in order to take away what? In order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has seen him or knows him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is, just as he is righteous. Now the one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning, and the Son of God appeared for this purpose for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God practices sin, because his sin, why? Abides in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. By this the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God nor the one who does not love his father. <clears throat> For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the evil one and slew his brother. And for what reason did he slay his brother? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you, we know that we have passed out of the death in, that we have passed out of death into life. Why? Because we love the brethren, and he who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We know love by this. How? 
that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But the who, but whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but instead how? But in deed and truth. Now we, we will know this, how? That we are of the truth and we will assure our heart before him. In whatever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. This is the commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. And the one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. We know by this that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given. <coughs> Excuse me. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Why? Because many false prophets have come out into the world. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. <clears throat> this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming, and now it is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and you have overcome You've overcome them. Why? Because great is he who's in you than he who is in the world. They are from the world, and therefore they speak as of from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and he who knows God listens to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But, beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, <clears throat> If God so loved us, we also to love what? One another. Now, no one has seen God at any time. And if we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know what? We know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. If we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know that we have believed in the love of God which has for us God is love and the one who abides in love abides in us and God abides in him. By this the love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is also we, he says, so also we in this world. Now, there is no fear in love. Why? But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he loved us first. He first loved us. Now, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is what? He is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this is the commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love brother, should love brother also. <coughs> now, whoever believes that Jesus is Christ is the born of God, right? And whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. 
By this we know that we love the children of God and that we love God and observe his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, <clears throat> but with the water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. So if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God, the greater testimony, uh, and the greater uh, uh, for the testimony of God is this, that he testified according, according to his Son. And the testimony is this, what? That God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has the life, but he who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. The thing, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have what? That you have eternal life. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. Now, if anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not, not leading to death, he shall ask and God will, and God will for him give life to those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should make requests for this. All unrighteousness is, is sin, and there is not, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that no one who is born of God sins, but he who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us what? Has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are him and who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and the eternal life. And this is the end of day 11. Little children, guard yourselves from idols.